coming up. Basketball season comes to an end after boys champions are crowned at the UIL State Tournament in San Antonio. Several North Texas teams in the mix will show you their results, and Glenn Smith returns with his recap. Also, the best season in this school's history made possible by one big shot. Plus, TAPS champions in the house tonight as we hear from the ladies of Lake Country Christian School. This is the Chevy High School Sports Special, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Chevy drives Texas. Another championship weekend putting the exclamation point on another season of high school basketball. Hello again, everyone. I'm Joe Trahan. San Antonio, the site again this week, just like it was last week for the girls. This time, UIL boys basketball teams deciding their state champions with title games on championship Saturday. 6A final, Allen and Katie Tompkins. First finals appearance for both schools. Tompkins took an early lead, Emmanuel White inside for the bucket. That gave Tompkins its biggest lead at seven. Now Allen cut it to three at the half, and we move on to the fourth quarter. Senior Jalen Walker hits the three for Allen, and we've got a tie ball game. Final seconds of regulation now. Game still tied. Jalen Scott with a chance to win it, but it gets blocked. Now they manage to keep the ball in bounds. Outside to Walker for the win. Just misses to overtime we go. Under a minute to play in overtime. Allen had a one-point lead. Oklahoma signee Jamal Bienemy finds Eden Holt. He hits a three, and the Falcons were up two. Now Allen gets the game tied with two clutch free throws by Walker. Then Tompkins with a chance for the final shot in overtime. But Allen gets the turnover. Jalen Walker to Donovan Parham on the break for the easy layup to give the Allen Eagles a basketball state title to go with the football title they won just a few months ago. Allen wins it 49-47 in overtime. Class 5A championship, North Northwest versus Port Arthur Memorial. Northwest cruising in this one. Mason Hicks, he's going to hit three of his game-high 27 points. Northwest up double digits at one point. Four-star recruit Avery Anderson making some nice plays, including this one. But foul trouble sends Anderson to the bench. And Memorial comes storming back outscoring Northwest 30 to 19 in the fourth quarter and that turns out to be the difference Memorial taking the lead for the first time in the game and holding on to win its first state championship great season for Northwest but they fall in the championship 75 69 and the 4A, wow, an instant classic. Carter Cowboys taking on defending champ Silsby from the Houston area. An offensive show. Carter shot 58% from the field, 60% from three-point land. It was 50-46 Silsby at the half. Back and forth game, then tight late. The Cowboys with the touchdown pass to Zahad Mumford. Carter has a three-point lead with three and a half left. But it was just too much Devin McCain 39 points for Silsby. He gets the foul and the bucket here. And Silsby gets it done down the stretch, beating Carter 104-101 in an incredible state championship contest. Well, the season ended Thursday for Midlothian in the 5A semifinals. Midlothian lost to Port Arthur Memorial in the Panthers' first ever trip to the state tournament. It was a tough road just to get to San Antonio, but Midlothian did it in spectacular fashion. And that's the subject of this week's Spotlight, brought to you by Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children. Just play one. Play one, the one. Sparking Midlothian's version of March Madness. That's the biggest shot I've ever hit in my life. Like, you always practice that when you're a kid, you know, three, two, one, shooting in the corner, hitting. I'll describe it as surreal and, you know, and amazing because you see buzzer beaters like that on Sports Center, Top 10, ESPN, and just to see it like happening during live action is like, it's amazing. The buzzer beater sending Midlothian to its first ever state tournament. The Panthers having fun with it, reliving that unforgettable moment. K. Narchi inbounds the ball. Caleb Jordan breaks to the corner. Caleb Jordan's free in the corner. Catches, releases. He shoots it. He shoots it. Shot. Ah, it goes in. Ooh, game. Oh, this is an amazing moment for Midlothian basketball history. <laughs> the celebration well deserved. The Panthers, the lone survivor from Uber Tough District 10 5A that had four teams in the top 11 of the 5A final state rankings, proving they're no fluke. Along their playoff journey, Midlothian beating top ranked teams, including those responsible for the last three state championships in their classification. 
So while they're new to the state party, they arrive as what I consider the most battle-tested team in all of 5A. So calling them Cinderella might not exactly fit, but it's that time of year, so perhaps the glass slipper will. Wow, what a great season for Midlothian. Our basketball coverage continues. When we come back, we'll highlight more UIL championship action from San Antonio. And the TAPS champions from Lake Country Christian School are in studio. We'll hear from them next on the Chevy High School Sports Special. Welcome back to the Chevy High School Sports Special, where we continue to highlight Saturday's UIL Boys Basketball Championships. Let's check out the 3A Championship. It's Bowie against Mount Vernon. This one a low-scoring game. Kaysen Pletcher carrying the weight for Mount Vernon. 16 of his team's 28 points, including 8 of 8 from the free throw line. That's good stuff. But the Mosley brothers led the way for Bowie. Number 22, Gary Mosley, a senior, number 33, Daniel Mosley, a junior. It's their final high school game together. Daniel Mosley scores 17 of Bowie's 32 points, along with a game-high 10 rebounds. Gary Mosley right behind with nine boards, including five on the offensive glass. And Bowie prevails in a close one, 32-28, to win the class 3A state, state title. It's their first state championship in boys basketball in 44 years. Class 2A championship now, West Texas versus Thorndale. Three players scoring double figures for Thorndale, including 13 points from Sam Reeves. Reeves was the only Bulldog to attempt a free throw. Not necessarily a good sign. West Texas also had three scoring double figures. Jalen Conyers had 28 points in the semifinals. Here with one of his three steals, Conyers finishing with 10 points and 10 rebounds. Nice double-double. But the story of the game, Jonah Villanueva of West Texas, the 5'8 sophomore on fire. Six of ten from three-point range, a game-high 22 points, a performance Villanueva won't soon forget. West Texas hangs on to win the Class 2A state title 61-55 over Thorndale. And the Class 1A championship, Lipan versus Nazareth. In the semifinals, Lipan set the 1A tournament record for three-pointers. They made 16, most ever in any classification in a state championship game. Now in this championship game, though, Lipan couldn't buy one. One for 10 from behind the arc in the first half. Nazareth up 22-21 at the break. But here comes Lipan. A little more than two minutes into the third, Bryce Shockley buries the team's only two three-pointers of the second half, and the Indians would take the lead. 14 points for Bryce Shockley. Meanwhile, Santana Martinez has four steals for Lipan. He also chips in 14 points. Santana Martinez, great name. And what a great time for Lipan. The Indians hang on in crunch time, 49-42, to win the Class 1A state championship. They began the season ranked number one among 4A private schools by the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches, and they ended the season still on top by capturing the TAP State Championship last Saturday, their fifth overall for Lake Country Christian School, and they are our guest here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, let's start with Coach Eric Betcher. And Coach, you've got a wonderful group. They've got this championship DNA. In your words, tell me what the, this team is like. Well, this is a great, hard-working team. You know, we come up, we practice uh, many days at 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, they do extra things that it takes to be a champion. They work well together, and I think one of the keys is they like each other, and we have fun. That's one thing I told them at the start of this year. We did want to win the state championship, but I wanted them to enjoy basketball and have fun. Yeah, it doesn't take long being around your team, Coach, to figure out that they really do like each other. So let's meet some of these young ladies who like each other so much. And let's start first with McKenna Whites. She's a senior guard. Now, McKenna, normally I like to ask teams if they've got uh, a team motto or a saying that they like to use. But your team has all these great inside jokes. So let's run through them, starting with why you guys all have blue hair. Well, the blue hair started with we all wanted to do something that unified us as a team, and we just thought the blue hair would be a good idea. Um, granted, Coach didn't like the idea very much, <laughs> but we walked into practice one day, and he was like, what is going on? But uh, it worked out pretty well, and 
uh, yeah, so that's the blue hair story. Well, and I got this next one really strikes a chord, I'm sure, with many people out there. Uh, tell me about Costco cake and what it means to your team. <laughs> Um, we've had Costco cake after a lot of our significant wins, so the 100th win and our state championship in 2016, so it's always been a tradition to have a Costco cake. And who doesn't like a good Costco cake, right? No, I, I mean, I'm right there with you, right? There have been a lot of birthdays in the Trahan household where Sophia and Sydney have had Costco cake, so I'm right there with you, okay? And, and this final one, okay, I had to be reminded exactly what this is, but Team Moo Moo? <laughs> Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the idea to put on Moo Moo's come from? Well, I had a Moo Moo, so I wore them to many of our like overnight trips, and they would all make fun of me for it. So, so by the way, Moo Moo, old school nightgown, right? Is that is that the most euphemistic way to put it? Yes, like okay. an oversized, uh -huh. long t-shirt, poofy kind of dress <laughs> that you sleep in. <laughs> and, and that caught fire with your teammates. Yes, it did. <laughs> all right, well, that's fantastic. Like I said, you guys obviously like each other a lot. All right, up next, we want to meet uh, Micah Lindstrom, who's a senior forward. Now, Micah, this 108-game district win streak is incredible, and I know it's kind of become a thing. Tell me what the thing means to you guys. Yeah, I mean, just getting ready for this season, we just knew the 100th win, like that was in the middle of our season and we were just super excited for it. And throughout the years playing, we'd always want to be that team that, you know, kept the streak going. We never want to lose the streak. And it was just something we always talked about. And it just like was something we all worked hard for. And every game we're like, all right, let's do this. And so just winning the 100 was just a big point for our whole team. Yeah, that streak's incredible stuff, and obviously you guys embraced it, and it became something that was really positive, and the pressure didn't uh, bother you guys, so that's great stuff. All right, up next is Maddie Colley. She's a junior guard, and Maddie, we just talked to a couple of seniors who are going to be leaving. I think you've got four seniors total that will be leaving this team. Tradition and togetherness and chemistry seem incredible, incredibly important to this group. So as you make that step, and you're going to be a rising senior, tell me about uh, the responsibility that you feel to try and uh, keep that tradition and this t togetherness going? Wow, okay, so these guys, I mean, they've laid the footprints down for us and it's just been amazing to be able to play. I've been playing with them for three years now and um, they really were just mentors to me and they showed me how to be, how to have great leadership and um, I just want to thank them for everything they've done for me and this team and now I know how to be a leader all because of these girls. They've just been amazing and I'm we're all really gonna miss them. They've just they're just amazing girls. Yeah, that's great stuff. That's great stuff. Passing the torch, it'll be your turn next year, and I'm sure you can't wait. And you said the job they've done is amazing. Let's talk about okay. this amazing young lady, Morgan Campbell. She's a junior guard. Uh, amazing would be that three pointer in overtime to beat the buzzer and keep this dream season alive. Morgan, take me back to that moment and tell me how you did it. Well, I just remember going over to my coach and I asked him, I was like, hey, if it comes down to it, can I shoot a three? And he was like, yeah, I don't want to risk it, but if it's what we have, then it's what we have. So I went over there, I pulled my team and I was like, hey, we can try a double pick and Madison will go in for the layup. And if not, you have two people rolling. Well, gladly enough, my players always have my back and they were able to see me open for the three. And See, that, that's, that's great stuff, Morgan. You're out there calling plays, right? And it works, and you hit the shot. I'm sure that's a memory uh, none of you young ladies will soon forget. I'm sure Coach won't either. Uh, one other thing, though, Morgan, before I let you go. You guys were able to win that fifth overall state championship. What did it mean to you and your teammates? Um, it meant a lot to us. Honestly, every practice we went into, we were like, okay, guys, our goal is state. We will get here no matter what. We told our seniors, this is it and we're, we're doing this for you. And ultimately, it was for all of us personally. You guys did it. Great stuff. Now, Coach, of course, you know how this works, right? You have this great streak going. You have this great team. They've won their fifth overall state championship. Uh, you're losing a couple of key seniors and some other seniors. What are the prospects as you guys move ahead to next year? Oh, I think the prospects are great. I mean, we have such great underclassmen here. You know, we started one senior. These, these other uh, four girls that started, 
They have worked hard. They work hard year round and, and study and play basketball. I think we will come out next year as the preseason number one, uh, and I look for us to repeat again next year as a state champion. All right, that's great stuff. You know we'll be watching. That's head coach Eric Betcher and the Lake Country Christian School Eagles state champions once again. Thanks so much, you guys, for being on the show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. Five state titles overall, and they're not done anytime soon. Stay with us for more Hoops Talk coming your way, folks. Glenn Smith joins me next. Keep it here, folks. It's the Chevy High School Sports Special. Basketball season ends with Saturday's UIL Boys Championships in San Antonio. Glenn Smith was there, and he's back at our studio tonight with his takeaways on the state of hoops here in North Texas. And boy, what a great showing for North Texas just from the jump. But let's start with that thrilling championship game as Allen gets it done in overtime. And, and at times it felt like they weren't going to be able to get it done, but they just kept fighting. What was your takeaway from them being able to win it all? My takeaway from Allen was that they never gave up. Uh, they believed in themselves whenever nobody else believed in them. Because outside of the basketball team in the community, I'm sure nobody thought that Allen was going to be able to make that deep of a run like, like they made. And when you talk about their run and when you talk about their road to make it to that state championship, Boy, they just, they were giant killers, right? It didn't matter if you were the top ranked team in Texas, the number two team, they just mowed them all down. Talk about that road that they had to, that they had to follow to get there. If anybody deserved to win a state championship this year, it was undoubtedly Allen. Uh, the Allen Eagles, they beat the number one team in the state and didn't Geyer, which beat them twice in district. They beat uh, Austin Westlake in the state semifinals, who was also a top 20 ranked team in the country, who had four uh, high major division one prospects. They beat North Crowley in, this, uh, in the regional semifinals. And then once they made it to the championship, they had that confidence that, you know, we're here, so we might as well win it all. Yeah, they had conf confidence. They had the intestinal fortitude. They just kept it going. It was great stuff. 5A Justin Northwest um, uh, for the second straight year. They make it back. Can't get it done in the championship. But there is still some reason to hope that they may be able to make it happen again, don't you think? I certainly think that they will. They are, they're led by Avery Anderson and Sammy Freeman. Those guys will definitely be back in state next year. Uh, they have a good core. They have a great coach and Coach Hatch who, who really knows how to get the most out of his guys. No, I think you make a good point. And another team from our area that wasn't able to pull off the victory. But man, that Carter Silsby 4A championship is one of the best state championship games I've seen because normally when you have a high scoring affair like that, the final was 104 to 101, it's running up and down court. But it was not that sort of mentality. It was great offensive efficiency and they just shot lights out. And I felt like Carter deserved more. I really felt like Carter deserved that game. You know, Coach Love did a phenomenal job with that particular ball club. It was, a, it was almost like a heavyweight knockout fight. It was like whoever got the last punch was going to win the fight. Both teams went at it from the tip. Uh, they both shot the ball phenomenally well. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a team shoot the ball as good as Carter did over the course of two nights. And I really, really want those guys to pull it out. Yeah, Carter shoots 58% in the championship, 60% from three, and it still wasn't enough. Hey, you guys, that was a great season and a Great showing in one of the one of the all-time instant classic championship games that we've seen down there. Now, when we talk about our teams in North Texas making it all the way to state, like several of them did, can you just talk about the fact that you don't have to win your district anymore to still be one of the best teams in Texas because we've got so much talent here? I think that's just a testament of how strong the basketball is in North Texas. Uh, for example, Midlothian went third in their district in District 10 5A and they made it to the state semifinals. Everyone thought or knew that whoever made it out of that particular district had a good chance of winning the state title. Uh, Carter finished second behind Lincoln. Uh, the state champion in 6A, Allen, finished second behind Denton Geyer. You know, so Texas, North Texas basketball in particular is really, really the new hotbed. No, I think you're right. The state of hoops in North Texas is just fine. And speaking of, before I let you go, some young players that were able to lead their team to state and who might, who we should have on our radar for next season going in. Who are some of those names we should think about? Uh, speaking of Carter, you definitely have to have to talk about uh, Mr. Zach Munford. He had, he finished with 37 points yesterday. He shot the ball phenomenal over the course of the playoffs and throughout the season. He will be one of the best players in the state next year. Uh, you have to talk about Tyrese Maxey. Uh, he tired a very, very old state record um, that was held by our Terrell. Uh, when he scored 46 points in the state semifinals. Uh, his teammate, 
Chris Harris, uh, Avery Anderson at uh, Justin Northwest, uh, just to name a few. Uh, those are some of the guys that will be back in the uh, hunt next year. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's North Texas, so we get to reload all that talent. And if they didn't get it done this year like Allen did, they're certainly uh, – uh, have a chance next year to maybe get that championship and uh, bring the hardware home. That's Glenn Smith. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. All right, keep it here, folks. The Team of the Week is coming your way next. Now, here's your Chevy Team of the Week, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. This week's Team of the Week, who else? The Allen Eagles. As you saw earlier in the show, Allen gets the last second layup to win it all in overtime. The Eagles took down the favorite Austin Westlake in the state semifinals on Friday after beating the number one team in the state to get to state. And wow, what a way to get it done. They advanced to their first ever title game appearance, and then Allen celebrates a state championship to add to the football championship they won in December. The Allen Eagles, 6A state basketball champs, they're our team of the week. Basketball season is done, and it's spring break now for schools all around North Texas. We'll take a break from covering sports for the next week while we bring you our best of the winter sports edition of the show next Sunday night. And you're sure to see more from the 4A TAPS champion, Lake Country Christian School Eagles. Thanks again to them for joining us tonight on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all did a fantastic job. And to all of you out there, thanks so much for spending some time, folks. I'm Joe Trahan. Good night, and have a great week. This has been the Chevy High School Sports Special, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Chevy drives Texas.